So this is the last part or portion of the Esther 2232 series. I'm going to ask you to pay attention and to take notes. And if you haven't watched the first two parts, begin with those two parts first. The Holy Spirit has led me to see that there are two major problems with the church today. The first one is debate. We must abandon the debate. One thing is teaching, clarity, explanation, all done in love and support for one another, for another brother or sister. But another thing is debate and bring in strife and fight amongst brothers. So I'm urging you to go back to Proverbs 6, verse 16, and try to understand how serious that is. And the second issue that the Holy Spirit made me see and understand is this idea of murmuring. We are so close to the end, brothers and sisters, and no, I don't have the day and the hour. As the title of the series explains, the day and the hour are not for us to know. But yet we're led to a very clear window, or rather a period of time, where both the signs and most importantly, scripture is leading us to understand that we are living in the last days. And with a great degree of detail. But that does not mean that we understand it fully, nor we comprehend it, nor we can set on a date, and most importantly, that the wisdom that we receive from the Holy Spirit is adapting and being released at the times appointed for us to know only what we're supposed to know. We're not here to tell the Lord when he should come or not come. We're here to wait, to pray, to watch, intercede, support and love one another and pray and bring the lost to the Lord. So as you watch this last part, which is extremely important and a mind blowing revelation, this is the wisdom of the Holy Spirit is not my doing. I just dimly see enough to put it together and explain it to everyone. This is not for my glory, is not for my merit, is not my intelligence. It just simply was a, I was led to see and I put it together in a form that many can understand. And as you do this, please continue to pray and return to scripture. And do not follow a man, not me, not a man or a woman, but the word of God. Draw near to the Lord and read the entire word of God for yourself. So in the first calendar, you've now understood that we're dealing with multiple calendars happening at the same time. That's in part one. Most importantly, the absolute most important part is the 10 years of labor and sorrow that goes from 22 to 32. So please go back to part one. Understand that we're talking about 10 years of labor and sorrow, which have given us evidence they've started. These are for Israel. Okay. Once you understand these 10 years of labor and sorrow, Okay. You're going to move on to the second calendar, which has to do with the day and the hour, which take us to the 83.3 years. Okay. From that calendar on, you're then able to move on to the last calendar. So the 83.3 years take us to the discrepancy okay, between 31 and 32. 31 being the second coming, and 32 being the end of all things. So now here's the mind blowing revelation about Esther. The Lord sent me to study Esther. First thing that we know is Esther is 10 books or 10 chapters, one book, 10 chapters. This obviously connects us immediately with the 10 years of labor and sorrow. Okay. So 10 years of labor and sorrow go from 22 to 32. Well, let's see. In Esther, the first chapter is 22 verses. The second chapter is 23 verses, just like 22 and 23. Well, once we go to the ninth chapter, we have 32 verses, just like 32. And with the 10th chapter, we have three verses left. 9 plus 3 is 12. So the Lord is showing us 
that the book of Esther is the map that takes you from 22 through 23 all the way to 32 and these are the 10 years of labor and sorrow now when he first showed me that it blew my mind but the one thing i couldn't understand is what do we do with the chapters in between so when we pay close attention and we start going through each chapter chapter 3 has 15 verses 4 17 verses 5 14 verses etc all the way to chapter 8 with 17 verses for they're clearly not 12 uh, they're clearly not representing each year the Holy Spirit led me to see that those verses equal the exact amount of months that go from the end of 23 represented by chapter 2 all the way to 32 which is represented by chapter 9 so this is absolutely mind-blowing because when we account the 15 months, 17 months matching the verses, 15 verses, 15 months, 17 verses, 17 months, 14 verses, 14 months, etc. And we start putting the dates starting from the end of 2023, which is chapter 2, which goes from March 24, 2023, that's Nissan 1, all the way to April 9 of 2024. When we start with the next day, which is April 10 of 2024 in Esther 3 or chapter 3, and we add the 50 months of that chapter, we get to July 9, 25, and then July 10, starting the next chapter and counting the 17 months for the 17 verses, etc. All the way, it takes us exactly to Esther 9, where we land July 9 to 15 or 31, all the way to April 9, of 2032 being the Nissan one of that year and again adding the three last months of the Esther 10 we end up finishing all of this July 10 of 2032 now this is absolutely mind-blowing why because it lines up so well with the 83.3 years versus 84 years which take us sometimes both in 32 and 31 with this range or seasons that we've looked at. And so now we understand that Esther is this absolute mind-blowing map that will take us from the time we're in all the way through the full tribulation, which completes and finishes in 32, according to our understanding and what the Holy Spirit has led us to see today. So now, I won't go through the full explanation of Esther and I encourage you guys to now with this understanding go to the book of Esther and study that but chapter 1 is up to 2022 and what I mean by that is when we see the feast the 180 days feast that represents the 1800 years that go from 70 AD to 1948 and that's exactly 1877 years now once we add the seven days, so one, we put a zero here in front of the 180 is 1800, and you put a zero here in front of the seven days feast in Esther 1, that's the 70 years from 52 to 22. Again, go back to the video where we explain the calendar for you to understand Psalm 90 verse 10, where we explain the 70 to 80 years and 52 go to Leviticus 19. 23 when we explain the four years from 48 to 52 that means that chapter 2 which is the 23 verses which represents 2023 20, which starts on march 20 or started in march 24th of 23 and will run into april of 29 of 2024 represents the time of when esther becomes queen or is made queen and the feast is made, and that's an Esther feast, which is in the month of Tevet, which is sometimes between this current year, December to January, between 23 and 24. And at that time, immediately after the feast, we have the second call of the virgins. So then we run through the entire curse of the uh, course of the tribulation and as you can see Haman which represents the Antichrist emerges or is promoted 
between 24 and 25 and then is dispatched and finally takes uh, its pride in its peak around 26 which is what we have studied in the Matthew 16 26 verse and so this matches very well with that and so the whole story then runs so that Haman, Haman is killed uh, right around 2030 potentially you know between 2030 and maybe even spilling over in 31 certainly looks like it will be just um, just around 2030 and so after that we can arrive then in 32 with the end of all things with the 10 sons of Haman which is slayed uh, my opinion and from my understanding currently representing the 10 kings which were giving a little bit longer time than the Antichrist to finish up in the tribulation so now we have the final feast and uh, this is pure M and that's obviously representing the second coming which will be in 32 so everything lines up so well where we have these two feasts the second coming and we can associate that with the rapture around the month of Tibet. Now I'm not saying, I'm gonna repeat, repeat it, I'm not saying the rapture is going to be doing this feast in Tibet. I'm not saying, I don't know that, and I can't say that. But I'm saying that there is now a very interesting relationship between the three calendars. The latest date will be the August of 24th, and that's based on what we have studied with the day and the hour calendar, which take us back seven years from 2031 to 2024 sometimes in the august that's this box then we have the feast of esther which happens earlier in 24 and at the end of 23 this is also a very high potential because of everything else we've talked about in the latest calendars but then we also have the April to May time, which is around where we're now, um, right after Pentecost because of Mary Magdalene. And so this is something that's leading us to see that between 23 and 24, it's the absolute highest chance that the rapture will occur. Again, while we don't know the day and the hour, we're really glad to see that around these times, the rapture could really occur. So I'm going to invite everybody to study Esther very carefully now with this understanding that it is a map of the tribulation and most importantly it's a map of the 10 years of labor and sorrow with the Antichrist and tribulation starting around 25 and 26 in their highest power but showing up a lot earlier you can see in 24 according to the Esther map Haman is promoted right around 24 and 25 and the most likely possibility of the rapture occurring anytime really between 23 to 24 with this understanding I just showed you which includes the second call of the virgins and the six months plus six months purification in, and at the time of the Tevat feast all of this happening right around the time that we're at so please use discernment I will be posting a link to download these three calendars you want to focus on the first calendar primarily because it explains the big picture and kind of leads you through the layers, the different calendars, how they are situated and working out. Then they're further confirmed by the day and the hour, the Matthew 24 study, you know, which is also including the Peter's denial study. You can see it up here how that six year span, as you zoom in, you'll start to see more detail. That six year span coincides with these six years um you know of the core of the tribulation and as well as the mary story which i would recommend everybody focusing on mary magdalene to get a real key of the rapture which has this 12 hours or 12 months discrepancy so you can get into that study and then finally getting additional detail through the understanding of esther and this mind-blowing idea that is a complete calendar map leading us from start to finish. I hope this series blessed you. We will continue to study and keep our eyes on the Lord to continue to pray and support one another. Stay away from the debate. Stay away from the murmuring. Continue to rejoice in the Lord. He's so very close. He loves us so much. 
to give us wisdom and understanding of his coming. Continue to pray and share the gospel with everyone. In Jesus' name, amen.